I'm going to follow up with a question that someone extracted from Discuss My Big Toe by Tom Campbell, one of our pages on Facebook. This extraction is from a post made by Paul. Tom keeps using vague language, and I think it's interesting in, in the fact of your description of entropy and subjectivity. Tom keeps using vague language patterns like a hypnotist or cold readers use. It means nothing, and it's just a word salad trick to get you to agree because you want to believe in it. He keeps stating the word entropy or evolving is the purpose, and God is not perfect. How do you know God is not perfect? if everything that is just is. There is no such thing. To evolve means there is a program to do this. If there's a program, it must have a moral code or a purpose, or it is what it is and it just does what it does. That's according to Tom's model. It's incorrect. It's a very, very strong statement, isn't it? He's challenging your, your model. The view that there is even something called entropy means it's subjective. It means nothing and you can't prove it. It has no meaning. How would you respond to that in light of the last discussion we had on entropy and right. subjectivity? But the writer of the question obviously is not a scientist or he would not say things like that. So, of course there are things like entropy. Entropy is a concept. It's an idea. Entropy isn't like a rock. It's not a thing that you pick up and weigh and, and measure and so on. It's a concept. It's an idea of relationships of things. And it first was, was um, talked about in terms of heat, thermodynamics. You have entropy. They noticed that if you just let things alone, they tend to lose heat. And if you let anything alone long enough, it'll just dissipate. Everything has a vapor pressure. Um, then you have to do work. You know, if you're gonna heat something up, then you have to put energy into it. If you don't put energy into it, then it'll dissipate until it comes to equilibrium with its environment. And then that environment is in another environment and so on. So ideas like entropy aren't things. It's not like entropy doesn't exist because you can't put it in a bag and weigh it. They're concepts. They're ideas of how things relate, why things work the way they work. And in order to describe these things, you make up words like entropy because you notice that if you put a, a hot rock in a cool room, the heat leaves it. Well, why does it leave it? What's going on there? So then people come up with the ideas of heat radiation, heat convection, entropy is always running downhill, and these things help us understand what's going on. So he seems to not have a scientific mind, the person who asked that question. And a lot of things that I describe uh, are described with general terms and general words. He's right. I wouldn't call that word salad. You know, it's not gibberish to uh, convince people to agree with you because you confuse them at all. But many things that I talk about are metaphorical. You know, when you talk about consciousness, we use metaphors. Our language is full of metaphors. Our words are actually metaphors for something. So we tend to speak in metaphors. Metaphors are not precise. Many things don't have precise um, language to describe them. How do you describe a really happy feeling? How do you describe utter despair. They're indescribable. So you make up metaphors. I felt great. I felt light as air. I felt, uh, you know, light radiating from me. And you make up all of these metaphors to help people understand what you felt. So talking about consciousness, talking about the nature of reality, is all conceptual. It's a model, conceptual model that one makes in order to understand how things work. Otherwise, everything's just magic. Oh, the sun comes up in the east and sets in the west. Why is that? I don't know. Magic. You know, it's just the way it is. Well, no, we look at that and we come up with explanations of why that is. The earth rotates. The 
You know, the earth goes around the sun. It has a tilted axis. So when it tilts this way and the sun's over here, then the north part is summer. And when it's put tilted the other way, when it goes around the other side, then the other part is it's summer. And the, the seasons change for the hemispheres. And so we explain all that instead of just saying, oh, it's all magic. It just happens. God does it. You know, but these are all, these are all generally metaphors. Now, explaining that the earth rotates, that's, a, that's what we call a fact. It does. But the only reason it's a fact is that nobody can come up with a better idea. Nobody can explain it any better. Why we have day and night and why we have seasons. There's no better explanation. So this explanation that we have makes sense. It seems logical and rational. So then we believe it. But if we looked at the details, it's a lot more complicated than that. It's not just that big picture. The details are always very complicated in almost anything that happens in the physical world. Hardly anything is really simple, but our concepts tend to be simple descriptions of complex things. And they're correct, you know, there may be two or three decimal places, but if you want to measure things exactly, you'll find there's lots of variation. There's lots of things that affect details. That person uh, doesn't really understand what it is I'm trying to do. They don't understand the nature of describing things that are indescribable. You know, like your happiness is indescribable. It's just right. a and, and let, uh, Although he can definitely state that evolving is the purpose and God is not perfect, he keeps stating the word entropy or evolving is the purpose and God is not perfect. How do you know not God is not perfect if everything that is just is? Well, He's more of a philosopher than, than well, a scientist. Well, you know that the same way you know anything else. You, you look at the way things work, how those things came to be, and they have certain properties and attributes. And perfection is not in those properties and attributes. Real things aren't perfect. <laughs> So, and I never said that uh, God was not perfect. I said that the larger conscious system was not perfect. Okay. And that's what I said. Now, if you want to make the assumption that the larger conscious system is God, well, then that's your assumption. Yeah. I don't say that. A lot of people do say that because that idea of the larger consciousness system then explains to them this very nebulous idea of God. What is God? Where did it come from? Uh, what's its purpose? What does it do? How is it connected to us? And how are we connected to it? All of these have no answers unless you, like all science, make a model. Come up with a theory. And if the theory answers the questions and, and is a good model, then it's not that you believe that the theory is the only truth. It's just to say, well, that's the best model we have. So it, un it helps explain things. You say that's what science is for, to help explain things. Well, and, and your theory of evolution is that this a system is striving for lower entropy. A system right. is striving to operate efficiently. Right. And no, if you don't no evolve system. positively... You're right. evolving negatively, and there's no such thing as a stasis of that. Right. No, nothing is perfect in that sense. Everything's in a state of change. Even the mountains are changing. You know, those mountains were a lot higher 20 million years ago, or maybe those mountains weren't even there 20 million years ago, or 100 million years ago. You know, everything changes. Everything's in flux. Everything is affected by other things. We don't have this pristine state of, of no change. That maybe is what his idea of perfect is. There's absolutely no change. Well, that sort of thing that never changes also never grows, <laughs> never evolves, never gets any better, doesn't get any worse. It's just stasis. It stays there. Everything grows. Everything changes. So the larger conscious system is still evolving. It's not fixed because nothing real is fixed. 
So if he has an idea that and probably this is probably what twisted his tail in the first place is that I said that God is imperfect and that he's probably a God person who doesn't like that and probably upset him. How do you know that? Well, I didn't say that. I said the larger consciousness system is still evolving. It's not a perfect thing. It's still changing. So because it's still evolving and changing, I can say it's it hasn't reached the state of perfection. It's still in the process of change. So anyway, somebody else made the leap between the larger conscious system and God. I do not say that in any of my books. I don't say that in any of my talks. But it answers an awful lot of questions in theology. What is God? Why is God? Where did God come from? How does God relate to us? And so on. And as it turns out, the larger conscious system is a pretty good model for that. That doesn't make it a fact or true. It's just a good model to explain why things are the way they are. And it explains a lot of theology. So take it for its face value. You know, it is what it is. It's a model. Same Would you with say that uh, entropy, that, that there is even something called entropy means it's subjective. Would you say entropy is subjective? How do you place that within your theory. He says it means nothing and you can't prove it. It has no meaning, but uh, science doesn't prove things. Science, no, science doesn't prove things. Creates models. This is a person who is, who is into proof and true being absolute, and it isn't. Um, everything, we, well, just the same discussion we just had about what is, what is knowledge, you know, and what is true. It's the, the same discussion. He's thinking there, you know, everything is absolute, and it's not. So entropy is an idea. It's a concept that describes how the world works. Larger conscious system is an idea. It's a concept that describes how reality works. These are models well, and understanding. Many physicists use the word entropy and understand the word entropy. Would you say it's a subjective thing? No, it's not a subjective thing. It's not like justice. Everybody has their own idea of it. It's a thing that you can measure. You can, you can measure the entropy of a system. If that system isn't too complicated, if it's a bucket of water and an adiabatic uh, surrounding, means there's a, there's a heat shield around it, uh, you can look at it and, and how, it, uh, um, how it cools how it lowers, you know, how the entropy increases. Uh, you can look at a gallon of gasoline and see how the entropy of that gasoline increases as the little molecules evaporate and go off into there. And pretty soon there's no gas in a bottle at all. It's all in the air scattered around. But that all of those molecules were a system. And all of those molecules are all part of that same system. Except now they're scattered everywhere through the atmosphere before they were all in a bottle. Well, a measure of entropy is a measure of order. When they're on a bottle, it was very ordered. When they're all scattered randomly in the atmosphere, it's very disordered. So we say entropy increases. All right. So entropy is a thing that can be measured in science. You can do an experiment and say the entropy of this thing is this number. And you can do that to 20 decimal places if you want to. So entropy is a real thing. That can be measured, just like mass is a real thing. Weight now is different than mass, but that can also be measured. Velocity can be measured. Lots of things can be measured. Temperature is one of them, and entropy is very closely related to temperature. So, yes, entropy is a real thing, but it's a concept. It's an idea. It's in things we can measure. You know, if you have a, a gas and you decrease the volume of it, you squish it, then the temperature is going to go up and the pressure is going to go up. Okay, What's temperature and pressure? They're just attributes of the gas. They're ideas, they're concepts, things that you can measure. You, know, you can measure the, well, you measure the results of the gas. You know, you measure how the gas affects the thermometer. That's what you actually measure, but you explain it in terms of entropy, in terms of heat, conduction, heat, um, you know, heat loss and radiation and other things. So we have science that explains things.
that you're using what you're he, using that's what that. he's missing yeah, yeah the, you're yeah, not out so, to prove anything you are offering yeah, no, evidence no, no. and logic and exactly. deriving and deriving yeah. your your big toe from that exactly so if he's claiming that your model has no meaning he's made his own model and that's fine too but that doesn't mean there is there is value to your model in from your experience oh, no. lots of value lots of value in physics lots of value in chemistry lots of value in biology these are all things that come up with ideas about how things work and they do experiments to verify those ideas and when you have a fact that the experiment says this is how it works and a lot of other people do it too then people uh, say well that's a fact but people don't say that will always be just like that forever because we learn things so we science does not go forward on proof science moves forward on evidence and once the evidence is overwhelming on something then we tend to call that a fact but things might change you know things things can you know things can change so we don't want to be so uh fixed mm -hmm. in our beliefs about things now the things that are around us okay i have a, you know i'm sitting in a house that's got walls you know those walls are going to be there tomorrow but these walls aren't going to be here what a millennia from now unlikely you know, two millennia three millennia from now the pile will be dust Somebody else will build something else here. You know, it's going to be a dig for archaeologists. Thanks for That's... engaging this statement from Paul. Uh, yeah. It made a very interesting follow-up from Richard's question on entropy and subjectivity. You have more power than you think. Hi, this is Donna from MBT Events. I have had the privilege to work with Tom Campbell for nearly 20 years now. And I can tell you from the feedback received through all those years that he has improved and changed thousands of lives with his My Big Toe theory. As a physicist and explorer of the larger reality, Tom has developed a program where you can learn to access and develop your natural ability as consciousness. His expertly crafted binaural beats are included Details are in the description below. Thank you. I and MBT Events hope you like this video. If you do, then you should consider being a Patreon member because Patreon members get early access to our special content. You will also be able to get your questions answered by me in special Q&A sessions. And most importantly, your contribution as a patron member will enable us to produce the content that you're looking for, so thank you.